and uh, we are rolling. <laughs> you act as a action <laughs> or something. Introduce well, yourself. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Peter Oruka. I am a Kenyan actor um, who started this craft um, around the year uh, well, 2011. Um, it's something I thought about before, um, and I tried, you know, though not. Several. I tried it at drama school in you know high school ETC, but then again around the year 2011, um, I remember I was in college back then. Uh, I decided because I had friends who were already doing this, and I, I thought to myself, since this is a, a passion I've always had for the longest time, you know, why not just try it out? So I ended up doing so. I remember this one time there was an audition for um, Changing Times. Um, it was at Kenya National Theatre. They needed a henchman. A bad guy. So um, someone called me up and told me, "Hey, uh, have you been watching Changing Times?" I was like, "Yes, I know Changing Times. You know they need a mafia henchman." And so one thing led to another. Subsequently, I found myself at Kenya National Theatre. Um, did my part, did the audition, and funny enough, I got the call back. I got the call back, and um, I went for a second audition. The next thing I know, I was a henchman on Changing Times. So that was my. TV debut. Ah, uh, where's your dream destination? Well, they're just generally traveling the world. Yeah. Uh, Abu Dhabi. Yeah, I would like to travel to Abu Dhabi. I've never been to Abu Dhabi uh, in Dubai, so you know, that's uh, something. Uh, what's your favorite meal? Nyamachoma and Omena. <laughs> I like Omena a lot. So, oh, so yeah. you mix Nyamachoma and Omena? Yeah, and corn bell. Yeah. Brown ugali. So in Lua, we call it corn bell. Dude, you're so uptight. How old are you again? I'm only 29. You're 29. <laughs> By the way, in 2011, you used to be given roles yeah. for older people, yeah, right? Tell us about that. Tell us about that. Um, you know, if you look at my my my, my demeanor, my my physique, I uh, come across a bit as a bit more mature than my age because typically people take it as people in their 20s should be behaving this way. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because you know when you talk about roles I've gotten which are much older than my age, you know they've taught me a bit more about um, how to grow up a bit faster, how to relate to different types of people because I've have had different types of roles whether it's a lawyer, whether it's a doctor, whether it's a mafia henchman, etc. So yeah, they've taught taught me a bit more about society, you know, mm. and how to, to 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 just to relate to different kinds of. Uh, Personalities. What's your ideal date? My ideal what? Date. <laughs> wow. Um, I don't have a girlfriend, but my, my the idea of an ideal date is somewhat just quiet, sort of like this place, um, full of good food, good music in the background, maybe jazz or something, and good conversation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay. 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 Um, I I see you. <laughs> I see what you you did right there. Uh, between Odi dance and uh, Kuku dance, which one? Uh, I, I I'm not very familiar with the. I know Kuku dance, Odi dance, but but I, I think I'll go with something I know a bit more. Maybe Kuku dance. <laughs> Kuku dance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. T-shirts or shirts? T-shirts. Mm. Yeah. Uh, truth or uh, feelings? What's time for feelings? Truth. Truth. Mm. Yeah. Money or eternal life? That's a tough one. That's a real tough one. <laughs> eternal life? Yeah, because mm. I guess you can make money along the way as long as you know, <laughs> life is mm -hmm. eternal. Are yeah. swimming in the river or swimming in a pool? Ah, swimming in the river, man. You know, you gotta get, get it hard knock a bit. You know, you take a bit of an adventure. Yeah, mm -hmm. so swimming in the river by all means. Okay. Yeah. Uh, reading or uh, watching TV? Reading, definitely. Mm -hmm. Which is the current book that you're reading? Right now, I'm reading what uh, um, has been dubbed. Odera Oroko in the 21st century. It's a compilation of a conference which was done in honor of my father in 2013. 
And so I also participated in that conference and my paper was uh, included as a chapter in that book. And so I'm reading slowly and slowly what other uh, of my father's colleagues wrote, you know, so that, you know, um, I see how to pick it up from there. It revolves around African philosophy and sage philosophy in particular. Mm. Yeah. Education or uh, street, street education or formal education? Can I say both? <laughs> Am I allowed to say both? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you can be um, well-versed in books, you can be a bookworm and everything, but you also need to be educated on the pavement. Mm -hmm. Very important. So, pavement smart or book smart? Okay, let me go with pavement smart. And when books, I mean, obviously book smart, but you know, you, you, know, you, you get the gist, you get the gist. Yeah. Okay, so which is your the favorite meal that you can cook? That I can cook? Yeah. Uh, beef, give ugali. Us, give us the recipe for ugali. Rice, recipe for ugali. Yeah. You just need to boil, um, boil, boil um, water to a certain bubbling temperature, then uh, slowly and slowly add the flowers you start. So like you have to have a thermometer, ama? Nah, you know, just use your eyes. As long as you see the bubbles, then you start adding the onga slowly and slowly. I, I, I know that, yeah. Okay. Um, nature trail or nature walk or indoors? Nature walk, definitely. Sheesh, does indoors. Life is too short for this. Okay. A night out with your friend or a night in, in indoors reading? Night out with friends, definitely, because I like sharing ideas and uh, with interacting with people. You know, the more you talk to people, interrogation um, is investigation, so you learn more okay. with talking to people. Yeah. Sugar, mercury, or copper? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, Kenya, you just gotta love Kenya. <laughs> I think I'll go with the mercury. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll go with mushroom. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, Facebook or Instagram? Facebook. I'm not a slake man. I don't know. 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 I do I think TV series, uh, um, the more they engage me more, uh, the suspense, uh, the plot of the story, some have to think about, which gives me some kind of gratification and thrill. So, uh, yeah, I'd say TV series by all means. A film or theater? Theater. I, I'm a lover of theater. I love theater. So, theater any day. Of course, film, yes, but theater of uh, film any day. Yeah. Okay. Jazz or rap? Jazz any day. Uh, rap, if it's old school rap. Mm -hmm. Favorite rapper? Jay Z. Uh, favorite, as I say, jazzist. <laughs> favorite jazz musician? Well, let's say Mutukutsi. I love Mutukutsi. Uh, feel and vibe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you would choose any place in the world mm -hmm. to live in, where would you choose? Any place to live in the world. Nairobi is good. Mm -hmm. No love loss for Nairobi, but uh, no. I wouldn't mind LA, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, we, we know where the influence is you know? coming from. <laughs> <laughs> so, because people start, uh, people love asking this, and I'm asked all the time by right. my friends who know that I'm an actor. Right. They ask you, apart from acting, what do you do? I do, I do acting. I've done a couple of things before, but I, you know, I ended up focusing on my craft mm -hmm. simply because you know now people can live off art and you know they can start their own productions um, and so I use my experience as an actor to learn how production houses work and mm -hmm. so perhaps what I'm trying to say is that one of the things I have planned um, for the medium term is at least by the end of this year to start my own production company um, which is very feasible and you know everything and possible and yeah. should work exactly should okay work. so what's your life mantra as a person my life mantra you see there's one thing which an existentialist philosopher called socrates once said 
that the unexamined life is not worth living, even as described in Plato's Apology. And so my mantra is you should always delve deeper and think about and examine the life in which you're living. Mm. You know, um, whether it's you're relating to family or colleagues or your spouse, um, think about that and think about perhaps ways of ameliorating that relationship. You know, think about ways to, um, you know, leave humanity and the world better than you found it. Plant a few trees, write a few books, teach a few kids a few things about, you know, the Kenyan, Kenyan history, for instance. Mm-hmm. So that, but that, to me, is my ma- kind of mantra in life. Uh, you've quoted uh, Socrates and Plato Nikakumbuka when I was in second year to give a philosophy <laughs> one one. <laughs> wow. Why do philosophers always yeah. want to look so intelligent? I've actually remembered okay. our lecturer Alit mm-hmm. Patia cousin. He, he used to say, mm-hmm. Medro, me, "Mediocre bu intellectually non di non sosere columni." Mm-hmm. Mediocrity of the mind is not allowed either by the gods right. or the pillars that holds the book sellers shelves exactly Where? that's not an excuse Where? i can't remember that very, <laughs> I mean, no, very, I mean, very important yeah. yeah so uh life quotes or what quote do you live by like i said um my main the main quote which inspires me inspires uh, my whole demeanor yeah, it inspires my interaction with my friends or peers or colleagues is that the same thing I said you know you should always examine life in totality okay. um, and just try and you know be the best version of yourself that you possibly can okay three words that the most best describe you resilient hard-working extremely fun you look <laughs> uptight what's your highest moment uh, that's a misconception of that's a very big misconception. You know, if you bump into me from the outset, you know, you'll assume that I'm a very serious individual. But you need to know me a bit better to know that. You know, I can be a bit of a joker. Okay, so what do you do for fun? Um, I like teasing my friends. Hmm? Um, you know, special shout out to Kenneth Steve. What? what? <laughs> <laughs> They know themselves. Um, yeah, so I, I just like you know making, for instance, imitating Indians and the Indian dancers. It would give us give us a, a something. Chori chori, look at me doing this interview. Are you ready, ready? Are you ready, ready? Are you ready, ready? Pa, shows off. <laughs> You don't look like things. Oh my god. So, yeah. uh, I am, so, what's I am. your highest moment as an actor? What can you say was your mm. highest moment as right. an actor? Right. My highest moment as an actor. Um, you know, I've quite um, an, an experience when it comes to screen and stage. Uh, though my grounding was in stage. Um, I'd say featuring in productions which I, I only dreamt of before, only to become a reality when you really talk about Mali, mm-hmm. New Beginnings, uh, Tujaribu, uh, Nganya, um, etc. All these uh, productions, um, I really aspire to be part of them. And, you know, subsequently for me, uh, especially Tujaribu, as uh, James Obondi, that was quite a, a high for me. Mm-hmm. Quite a high for me. Lowest, My, yeah, lowest moment as an actor? Like any other actor getting rejected at audition, um, you know, there's a reason why this is called the rejection business. Um, if you're not resilient, uh, it can be frustrating and it can, it can get to you. Um, and so, you know, sometimes, you know, rejection is it's, it's a bit um, difficult to take, but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lesson nonetheless. You just keep improving on, you know, your, your, your flaws. Mm-hmm. Um, could we say your brother is a Hollywood star, by the way? Tell us about that, because many people don't know about that and right. how that came about. Right. Yeah, and you had to blow my cup. Anyway, yeah. Um, my brother Owiso Odera, um, though he's late now, um, was a Hollywood actor. Um, he did quite a lot for himself. Uh, like me, um, when he went to the States, he finished school at St. Mary's um, then around 1991. My father, who was a professor, got him a scholarship at um, Alham College because he had taught there before, so it was easy for him to get his, to, to get his kids' scholarships. Um, so the first thing my brother went to do at Alham in Indiana was um, computer science. 
But you know, he finished, he graduated in 96, but subsequently, even worked in New York for a couple of years, but he didn't like it. You know, he was more of an arts guy. And so that compelled him to go to, um, to do a master's in fine arts at the University of California, San Diego, um, at which he graduated in 2005. So from there, it was a bit easy to navigate. It has these its its own challenges because you know it started out with production such as you know the unit, down 3RS, um, movies like the Fast Blood Wars, Relative Obscurity. Um, then subsequently, he started getting bigger roles. Uh, when I think about Flash Forward, uh, uh, the, the unit I've mentioned, the unit, Madam Secretary, and NCSLA, uh, Unforgettable. Um, and you know, subsequent the originals as Papa Tunde, you know that that was quite something. I was quite impressed by him. I even sent him messages, and we talked on phone, phone about it. I was like, I never knew you could be so scary. Because one thing about him, he as a, as an as an individual, he was very humble, uh, very good-hearted. So the idea of him as a vampire never really occurred to me. So the, when I saw him in originals, you know, it, uh, <laughs> it was a pleasant surprise. Pleasant surprise, but at the, at the same time, I wasn't very scared of his character because I, I know him as a, as, a, as an individual. So <laughs> it is only scary, scary to maybe people who didn't know him personally. But he was a very down to earth guy, uh, very fluent in Luo because of my father's influence. Um, Are you fluent in Luo yourself? Yes, I am. Um, uh, tell us something in Luo. Arato do Luo Tawache. When you speak English, <laughs> someone someone can assume that yeah. I understand Kijalu. No, so no, no, no. so let's just say you you're well spoken in all these languages. Precisely. So your, your English, how did it come about? Because Mazesi si to grow up time yetu ilikuwa atawezi uko class 7 lakini kizungu bado inagongama. How how did this come about? Ama ni watch movie mob. <laughs> funny, 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 no. <laughs> well, if, if you look at it, a lot of big people I interact with. Um, coincidentally, um, since I come from a background of, you know, scholars, so I, I, I perhaps tend to interact with my, my father's colleagues quite a bit, some are from all over the world, they to see the schools I've gone to as well, perhaps have played a part in uh, shaping the kind of uh, man you see in front of you. So maybe that's how it came about. Are you a scholar yourself? Yeah, I'd like to think of myself as an intellectual, a philosopher, but in a sense, every man and woman is a philosopher as long as you think about life if you think about how you're going to do your laundry think about how you're going to make your supper so in in, in a sense every man is a philosopher why well, must i think me i'm one of the greatest philosophers in this world because i think of how i'll get money all the time <laughs> So, I mean, so that, that's right? economic philosophy. So, yeah. so I'm, a, I'm an economic philosopher. Yeah, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, so um, acting and uh, real life. You had all these options in life. You mm -hmm. could have been a professor mm -hmm. from your background. You could have been anything else. Why acting, especially in Kenya and with all the problems that are there? Why did you choose acting? I don't like to think of them as, 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 as problems. I, I like to think about them as challenges, challenges which make us better. Okay, if, challenges. If challenges. you look at the Kenyan film industry, for instance, it has grown in leaps and bounds. You know, from the times of uh, Mark, Vyoja Makamani to Ta Maki uh, to uh, Vitimbi to now we're having things like changes and uh, disconnect. So it was really and Supermodo. Grown. And Supermodo, you know, name it. And Lusala. There you go. There you go. There will be half life. Yeah, so you cannot really say that we are stagnant. We are moving and we are growing lips and bounds. At the same time, my career as an actor is not just limited to Kenya. Who knows where I might end up? <laughs> Speaking of not limited to uh, right. Kenya, yeah. what is it that Kenyan actors are not doing to be out there? With because I look at someone like Oluenya and he's a great 
actor, possibly one of the greatest actors of all time. Biology. Look at the people who did Supermodel. Look at all those actors. Look at Disconnect, Kina right. Brenda, Wairimo, Nick Mutuma. They are great at what they do. In fact, if you put them in the world stage, I believe they can give people a run for their money. Mm. So why why are we not there? Why 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 are we not out there? What is the challenge? You will say man is same problem. What is the challenge? Biggest setback is um, or drawback for that matter is branding. How do actors brand themselves and consistency? You know, thing is, you may do a production and you know, blow up real big. But what do you do after that? You know, there are people who have done great things where they look at Nairobi Half Life ETC, but you never hear of them again. It means they are not consistent. You know, you should always be consistent in your art. But you, you know, see, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. let's just be honest with each other. As an actor, I go for an audition, either I'm picked or not. And being picked does has nothing to do with my talent. Right. Mostly, it's maybe height, maybe I'm black, mm -hmm. maybe I'm bald, maybe I'm. That's why I won't be picked. Mm -hmm. So how do you tell me to be consistent when I can't get consistent work? Right. No, uh, the, the, the best way uh, to be consistent is working on yourself. And when I talk about working on yourself, I go back to branding. Whether it's having a website for yourself, together which has your reels, which has your headshots, several of them. Whether you're having beards or not, bald or not, um, or have a proper acting resume. So once you have all that packaged in one, it's very easy to navigate the industry because people see how organized you are. You know, and learn how to put yourself out there, whether it's through social media or it's through... Uh, certain groups uh, which have been formed especially when they talk about the gills etc learn how to put yourself out there and use speaking the social of, media uh, to advantage speaking yeah. of social media mm -hmm. do you really think social media can give someone work as an actor it's given me work before well same here but yeah. do you think it's it's something actors should highly consider Obviously, the best way to go about these things is get yourself in the right circles because there are some auditions which are closed. You'll never hear of them anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so learn how to get yourself in the acting circles, which you'll get referrals um, to. You know, once you get the friends, uh, then they know your work. And it's out there. Then, so when I talk about circles, whether it's maybe the guild you know, become part of that as an actor. Don't be a floating actor. Don't be an island by yourself. You know, you never go so far by yourself. You can only move baby steps, but you need other people together. Okay. Yeah. A Kenyan film industry in the next five years, where do you see it? Wow. I, I have a very, very, very optimistic feeling about uh, the future of this industry. Uh, simply because if you look at the history, if you look at the record of how it has grown over time, then, you know, it's really exciting, not just for any artist out there, but for anyone who's keenly following um, the industry itself. I mean, I look forward to more collaborations with, you know, artists from different parts of Africa. We've done that before with Nigerian, South Africans, etc. So I, 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 I envisage a scenario where uh, we'll be having collaborations and partnerships with people all over the world, whether it's Australia, Europe, the US, name. Okay, yeah. as someone who, who, who your brother has been to Hollywood and you're an actor as well and I think maybe mm -hmm. that's your ultimate goal. What did you learn from him that you would want the rest of us actors to know? Because maybe if he was here right now, maybe we would have done this interview with him and he would have told us. Maybe he told you, I mean, is, is there anything you want to tell us? Work on yourself and do the craft of, for what it is. Don't do it for the fame. That's missing the picture. Missing the, it's totally missing the point. Um, if you're going to be an actor, don't do it for the fame. That's just a, a bonus. But do it because you love the craft. That way, everything else, whether it's money, whether it's fame, will, will always follow. Um, but you see, uh, the, the, there's a very uh, whatever balance. As an actor, utasikia mtu anakuambia, ah, sina do, kam ufanya job pro bono. 
then you, you graduate from pro bono and they're still calling you for pro bono, pro bono, pro bono, and you're sharpening your craft. As in, wh wh what is the balance between acting as an art and acting as a business? Because truth be told, you can never pay rent using exposure. How do you find the balance, sir? And how, how should actors go about it? Because there are so many opportunities out here. Uh, someone tells you, uh, Nyaje, come do this uh, type of work right now. It has nothing, but the kind of exposure it will give you is right. good. Then you let go of that job, but probably should have yeah. given you proper exposure. Yeah. And others, mm -hmm. no exposure. As in, how do you know? How do you tell gigs to do and gigs not to do? Yeah, there's a lot of that, especially with the pilots flying around everywhere. Um, two things. Number one, know your worth. And number two, like you said, you know, you, you have to pay your bills. You know, learn how to say no. Learn how to say no to things which you know will only drag you as an artist, will not add value to your life, will not put food on your table. So as much as you may do that starting out, do pro bono starting out, eventually you know, you're gonna have to learn how to say no. You know, if you're not, you know, we can't come to an agreement or certain standard rates, mm -hmm. then. So advice right. to upcoming actors? Advice to upcoming actors. Uh, if at all you're serious about venturing into acting, please, please, first of all, think about it. Do your research what is required get to know get into the circles get to know people who are already where you want to be um almost at a personal level it, it will work for you um then apart from that um have your basics whether it's your reels even if you haven't done any tv gig you can just you know have a friend somewhere do a small gig and take a video of it have your resume with you right uh for my parting shot i it's very clear for me you know Believe in yourself, be consistent, stay humble, and do your research. Where can your fans find you? Oh well, yeah, you can find me on uh, social media, Facebook, uh, Peter Uruka Odera, um, Instagram, Peter Uruka, IG, Peter Uruka. Okay, so I thank you so much for thank your you. time, sir. Thank you. Thank you really for your contribution it. to the industry. Thank you so much for this. I'm sure this will go a long way to show people out there that actors are not just what to do. As in, guys yeah. are well read, yeah. guys are learned, yeah. but they choose to do this. So Asante they should sir. value their work as well. Asante, sir. Cool. Thanks, man. All right.